Did you know Lionel Messi has his own word in the dictionary? Yeah, you heard that right. Messi is so incredibly good at football that there was an official word created to describe him. Inmesionante. The word was first used by Argentinian manager Alejandro Sabea. Wonder what the word actually means? Perfect way to play football. An unlimited capacity for self-improvement. Where's your official word, Cristiano? It's safe to say we all know Messi to be one of the greatest of all time. But Barcelona's recruitment scouts knew it when he was only 13 years old. And the way they ended up signing him is quite legendary. When Carles Rexach saw a young Messi playing, the sporting director knew this boy was going to be something special. So he decided to snap him up as quickly as possible. He was so desperate to get Messi that while they were sitting in the cafeteria, Carles grabbed a napkin and scribbled a quick contract to lock the deal in at once. Young Leo actually ended up signing his first ever professional contract on that napkin. But what exactly was written on that famous napkin? In Barcelona on December 14th, 2000, in the presence of Minguella and Horacio, Carles Rexach, FC Barcelona's sporting director, hereby agrees under his responsibility and regardless of any dissenting opinions to sign the player Lionel Messi, provided that we keep to the amounts agreed upon. They had agreed to pay $40,000 a year for Messi and cover all of his very, very expensive medical costs. And that little contract on a napkin ended up changing football forever. It's rumored that Messi has kept this napkin ever since. But don't think that this was an easy deal, because although the contract may have been legally binding, not everyone was immediately convinced by the young Messi. And the primary opposition to this deal was none other than the president of the club himself, Juan Laporta. He thought it was way too much money for such a young player. So what are you going to do when the head of the club himself is against your signing? Well, we don't quite know what ended up happening behind closed doors, but one thing's for sure, Messi definitely ended up signing for Barca. And I'm pretty sure years down the line, Laporta was very happy about the signing and can laugh at the ridiculous 40 grand a year he used to pay. But there was something else that held Messi back drastically at the beginning of his career. You see, Messi was diagnosed with a condition that almost cost him his career forever. When Leo was only 11 years old, he was diagnosed with growth hormone deficiency. This caused him to grow much slower than other boys, and the treatment for this condition was very expensive. Over $1,000 every single month for all the injections. The Messi family simply couldn't afford the treatment, and most teams Leo tried out for declined to cover these costs. But thankfully for Messi, Barcelona saw the potential in Leo. Thanks to these injections, he grew up to become a force of nature for both Barcelona and Argentina. Speaking of Argentina, did you know Messi isn't actually Argentinian? Well, that's not completely true. He is part Argentinian, but he's actually also part Spanish. So yes, Messi could have been a part of that insane Spain squad that won the World Cup back in 2010. But where does his Spanish side come from? Well, Messi's grandparents were actually Spanish. The Spanish Football Federation tried many times to get Leo on their team, but he always declined. His love was always for Argentina. But let's just imagine Lionel Messi playing alongside Xavi and Iniesta in the Spanish national team. What an insane team! Messi's choice to play for Argentina may not have been the best one in hindsight, and the way his international career began could have made him change his mind. In his entire career, Messi has only gotten three red cards, but the first one was actually on his international debut. Definitely not the way to start. The year is 2005, and Messi is finally given the chance to represent Argentina in a friendly match against Hungary. Messi is subbed on and everything is looking fine. Well, that is for the first 43 seconds. Messi ended up fouling one of the Hungarian players and was shown a red card immediately. Did I already mention the part where he only played for 43 seconds? What a disappointing start. Messi was absolutely furious and devastated as he walked off the pitch. I'm pretty sure Leo was very embarrassed, especially thinking about his grandmother watching his debut and failing miserably. You see, 
Messi loves his grandma, and it's not hard to see why. Messi's grandma is the one that got him started in his football career. Messi tells the story in an interview where his grandma convinced the coach to put him in a match with one of his older cousins. The coach didn't want to put Messi in because he was too small, but his grandma insisted. After the game, he told Leo's grandma, buy him football boots, I'll take him to training next week. That's where it all started for Messi. Unfortunately, Messi lost his grandma in 1998 when he was only 11 years old. Ever since then, almost every time he scores a goal, he points to the sky to dedicate it to his grandma. What Messi's grandma did for him is exactly what Messi's father is doing for his grandson, Thiago. Messi is not one to put pressure on his child to take in his dad's footsteps, but Messi's dad was not having any of it when Thiago was born. Because only three days after Thiago was born, his grandpa was negotiating a deal for him to be signed to the Newell Club. Now, we're not sure if Thiago's little fingers were strong enough to sign the paperwork, but being a part of a club that produced Maradona and Messi when your eyes aren't even open yet is a pretty outstanding achievement. But once again, Messi has stated that he would never pressure his son to step in his boots, so we know little Thiago is in good hands. Messi is a family man, of course, always spending time with his wife and the kids when he's not playing. But before he had a family, he spent his time doing something else that almost ruined his immense potential. You see, Messi was absolutely addicted to his PlayStation. He would play literally all the time. I'm sure he's quite good at FIFA by now, but I'm sure I'd easily beat him. It's a shame the opportunity will probably never present itself. As soon as he got a family and his responsibilities went up, he started to reduce the gaming. Playing on the PlayStation? I stopped playing. It's more Tiago who plays. Before, I played all day long. After his birth, I stopped everything. And then I played with him from time to time. Maybe when he's done scoring goals on the field, he can venture into a career as a pro gamer. Who knows what he might achieve? But the gaming addiction came hand in hand with something way, way worse. And this one could have literally ruined his career for good. We all see Messi as a top athlete, right? Lots of training, discipline, healthy food, and so on. Well, it turns out Messi was actually very bad at keeping a healthy diet. He never paid attention to what he ate and even ended up throwing up in multiple games before his entourage forced him to make a change. I ate badly for many years. Chocolates, fizzy drinks, and everything. That is what made me throw up during games. Now I look after myself better. I eat fish meat, salads. I'm sure even I had a better diet than Messi at the time, but for some reason, I was never able to make it to professional football. Oh well, at least I have a semi-decent YouTube channel now. But I'm still far from Leo's 1.3 million subscribers, so hit the button to help me catch him.